for quite a while. Um, it's goodbye from me, Ricky Gervais, Steve Merchant. Goodbye. And Carl Pilkington. All right. Right, years ago, uh, people only drank water, didn't they? How long ago are we talking? Uh, going back a bit. Okay. Um, and it was just the norm, everybody was happy with that. It was kind of like, you know, what, you're thirsty, you have some water. It was just what you did. Um, well, and it was no. more of... Well, no, not only water. No, it was, it was kind of like... Well, they drank uh, milk at birth, didn't they? Yeah, as a baby. Mm. But then you don't you don't have that when you're older. What I mean is, is more now, as we've discussed, is more of everything. So I thought there was fruit juices and yeah. But what stuff. I mean, when people were thirsty, mm. it was it was like have water. They didn't go, oh, what do you want? Do you want this? Do you want that? I'm, I'm just saying yeah. they had it for a purpose as opposed to uh, something on the on, for the taste buds. Right? Yeah. So um, so anyway, so this this town, right? Uh, it was in the middle of nowhere somewhere. Yeah. Um, it's the um, it's the detail that makes the story, yeah. isn't it? The, the the pinpoint accuracy of uh, you know. so it was a while ago, and it was in a town somewhere. Brilliant in the middle of nowhere. And what what used to happen is barrels used to appear, right? These sort of uh, do you know like how they have um, wooden barrels that beer and that comes in. Right. Mm -hmm. One of those used to just be in this village, and everyone who lived there uh, was used to this sort of drink that used to crop up, right? Well, because they were used to it, they didn't question it. It was kind of like, yeah, it's what happens if you live here. Sorry, so I don't understand. So what's in the barrel? It's a barrel in the town square. Well, it's this drink. Right? And it, so it's not water. It's not water. It's a mysterious it's, it's, other uh, drink. Well, it, it, I'll tell you now, it's it's like a fruit drink. Okay. And back then, I mean, I, I speak to my mum and she didn't have a banana so she met me dad. And they were made up of fruit. Sorry, is that some euphemism? I don't know what that means. No, but what, what, <laughs> I, mean, what I mean is... Was that is, he came a-calling with a banana. <laughs> <laughs> with a bunch of bananas and said some, said some flowers. <laughs> <laughs> no, but what I'm saying is, uh, it was like a fruit drink, and for years and years, people didn't drink fruit. It was an eaten thing. Do you what? know what I mean? It, it was, was an eaten thing. thing. It, it was an eaten. eaten. Yeah, what, it, was, it was. It was. You thirsty? Have some water. What? You're hungry? Have a banana. Have an orange. Sure, but the idea of combining the two, crazy. They never used them in that way. So anyway. So a mysterious fruit-based drink is turning up mysteriously in this town for years. No one questions it. No one thinks. They yeah, just fruits in that area. I'm sure, like in Here the come same. Come the man. No, but, but in the same way that in Scotland they'll have um, fried Mars bars and that, yeah. they don't bat an eyelid at that. Yet when we go there, well, no, they well, they, well, they don't. They didn't appear mysterious. <laughs> did they? <laughs> they didn't just appear go, one day. I assume they go to the news agents and take it home and pop it in some batter. I yeah, don't, I, but what I'm saying is they mm. don't think anything's odd about that. But as time goes on, people have started travelling more, haven't they? Ooh. And uh, you have visitors sort of came in to the to the town. To the town. And uh, mm. they were saying, oh, I'm a bit thirsty, have you got any water? Mm -hmm. And they were like, I don't have water. Have, uh, have some of that in that barrel. And they were like, what's that? Oh, that's a drink. So they had it, and it was really, like, refreshing. Of course. They were like, what is this? And they said, don't really know, it just crops up. <laughs> of course they did. No. It's what, uh, no. It's what you get if you live here, it's part of living here. Right. So they were like, brilliant, do you sell this? And no, they don't just sell it, we don't even know where it comes from, just have some whilst you're here. You don't even know where it comes from. No, so the bollocks. thing is, this, this helped the, uh, the town out. That's before the monkey appears. This shit. <laughs> yeah. So all these people are enjoying the drink. Mm. Word gets out, and yeah. it went on for a couple of years. But they say it travels fast, doesn't it? If it's yeah. good, if it's good news, it travels. If it's good news or bad news, yeah, just news. Yeah, news does. So um, mm. anyway, so some business, monkey news doesn't. This is taking half an hour. So some big business fella oh. who was on oh. holiday. In any it, specifics? It was from <laughs> uh, Chicago. Right. Oh, and he, he flew. How tall was he? Hold on, though. So, this is after Chicago was founded. Oh, right. uh, yeah, Chicago was knocking about. Oh, they had loads of drinks then. Yeah, they had alcoholic. coffee, and no, tea, coffee, yeah. tea. Alcohol. Yeah, they had every drink under the sun. Yeah, but not like... Every any, drink under the sun. Not like Apple juice, grape no, juice, no, ciders, don't. wines. Every, just, yeah. So, so he, he came oh, in. Oh, Chicago was founded. He, and, ca uh, he came yeah, in. Yeah, probably um, 19th century. Oh, there's loads of shit about. And he was saying, this drink you've got here, so it's good stuff, you know. Mm. Said, Whose is it? And they said, well, it just appears and what have you. And they said, well, that's a bit odd. 
Mm. So anyway, he, he got a bit annoyed with it because he wanted to take it back with him to Chicago. He knew yeah. there was an, an audience for this. Well, yeah, yeah, because they got bored of tea, coffee, coffee all the other yeah, drinks, yeah, and yeah, drinks and that. Yeah. So he uh, he waited Need. at night. I've been around for years. Waited at night, waited behind a truck. Mm. <laughs> a a truck. truck. Oh, so, it's, uh, so we're in a motorised age. Oh, so, so uh, at least 1890, <laughs> something I, I thought. Uh, and he saw this uh, little fella uh, bring the barrel out. How little was the fella? It's hard to tell in the dark, and they were quite far away. And the barrels, you know, it's, it's, you know I mean? it's, tricky. it's hard it's to tricky. work out. Yeah. He uh, was short, his arms were long. So, um, so they followed him in, right, and uh, saw what was going on. Okay. Like how it was being made. Mm. And uh, and they said, you know what, we we can have a go at making this ourselves. And what happened in the end, they, they tried to imitate it in Chicago. Mm. Uh, it was a orangey tang, right? It was made by an orangutan, wasn't it? And uh, you know, grapefruit juice. Mm. They had like ape fruit juice that that they they were good at crushing the fruit with the feet and what have you. And that's that's how them two. So it was great ape fruit drink. Yeah. Which probably got abbreviated over time. Ape fruit, ape fruit, no, ape fruit juice. No, no, it was great ape fruit juice. It was because it tasted great. That is a load of shit, Carl. That is why we stopped doing it. The Ricky Gervais Show on Guardian Unlimited. Hello, welcome to the Ricky Gervais Show with Guardian Unlimited. Back where it all started. With me, Ricky Gervais, Stephen Merchant. Hello. And of course, Carl Pilkington. Mm -hmm. The internet phenomenon that is Carl Pilkington. Ah, now ah, this could be that, interesting. Now that noise, do you want to explain, Steve? I will. I've just sent a text to this number that some of you may have heard of, 63336. Now apparently this is a number you can uh, send a text to, and it will answer any question that you have for it. And in the past, for instance, I sent it um, quite some quite profound questions. I once asked it, um, should they have dropped the second bomb on Nagasaki? And it had a very thoughtful answer. So we've sent it a question, perhaps equally thoughtful. Carl Pilkington believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? Now, we sent that because this is the Halloween special. These podcasts are, are three one-off free specials, and they're free because we want to thank people who uh, who paid um, for the for the audio books we did, the uh, the last two series. So thank you for that. I just bought a, a flat in New York, and Steve's just bought a lovely BMW. Mercedes. Oh, is it a Mercedes? Yeah. Oh, is it? Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah I haven't seen it yet. Carl's have his kitchen done and his boiler replaced. Still not happy. But um, yes, thank you. Um, uh, the back catalogue is still available um, in audio books on iTunes, but these are three free ones. Anyway, the question we asked six triple three six: Carl Wilkinson believes in ghosts. Is he an idiot? And this is the response. Unusually, producer Carl Pilkington is both an idiot and a comic genius. His humour is not to everyone's taste, however. That's <laughs> amazing. That's the response. But it's curious because it doesn't really answer our question about ghosts. Send them, do you believe in ghosts? Okay. This is the Halloween special, of course. That's why we're talking about ghosts. Carl, do you believe in ghosts? Uh, yeah. I mean, I haven't, I haven't seen, like, a proper proper ghost. So why do you believe in something that uh, there's no evidence for? Yeah, you but what, what, why are we here then? If, if it is just sort of, you're born, right? And when, I mean, we are useless, at least other creatures, when they're born. Well, you speak for yourself. No, but they born, other creatures are born to do a job, aren't they? When a bee's born, you know what that's going to be doing. It hasn't got any <laughs> options. That's got a job to do. And it does that job and it dies and the next one comes along. Oh. We asked it, do you believe in ghosts? The existence of ghosts is not proven. Many experiments have claimed to identify ghosts, but none have been scientifically sound. Excellent. See, yeah, that, that, that's that, just, that's but that, but that, that's a sensible, intelligent, logical, thoughtful answer. Weird things have happened to me when I uh, mm. was living at home. And I uh, was in bed one Where'd night. you live now? No, but I was at my first home. Your mm. parents? Yeah, my mum and dad's. Mm. So I'm in bed, and uh, I'm lying there, do you know you get that sense of like, uh, oh, there's something going on, mm. and uh, I sort of look over my quilt, and there's nothing there, thinking it's weird that, so uh, turn me back on it, I'm thinking I don't want to know if there is something there, I don't want to know. Right? <laughs> so I'm turning me back on it, but then there's like a really high pitched noise, right? Sort of the hairs on my back are like going up a bit, and I'm like, oh, I don't like this, and it's the, the high pitched noise. Yeah, the hairy back even as a kid. 
No, but you know, everyone's got little hairs on them, them, aren't they? Everyone's got little tiny hairs on them and Mm. stuff. And uh, and I thought, I can't stand this. And and I turned around, put the light on, legged it downstairs. Mm. And my mum's saying, what are you doing? I'm going, oh, I don't know, there's something up there. So she said, all right, then watch the telly. So I stayed up for a bit, Mm. uh, watching the telly. Went back to bed, the high-pitched noise had gone. Went to sleep. Get up the next day. Charlie from next door comes round. He goes, Hilda's dead. Mm -hmm. Right? And... uh, my dad said, oh, when did that happen? He said, last night at quarter to eleven. Right. That's, that's when I was in bed. So? What, what are you telling me for? Because it's weird, isn't it? It's that thing of... Uh, what, do, what, what do you think would be weirder that uh, no one ever died at quarter to eleven when you were in bed? No, but that's when all the weirdness was going on. That's when the tone was happening, my back was getting itchy and stuff. Um, Coincidence. And I went down and watched telly, went back up to gone and that, but that's when her spirit had sort of... No. Ah, okay, right, interesting. No, this is, this is where we get into the... F- whizzing yeah. round, whizzing round my yeah. bedroom, because my bedroom was right next door to theirs. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So, I'm just saying, that's, that's one. Why, that's did they, why do they whiz round when they, when they die? Why do spirits whiz round when they die? Because they're going, where am I going? Are they? And they're whizzing round, aren't they? Am I going down? Am I going up? No, no, that's oh. calm. Oh, no, no, but I'm going the wrong way. Yeah, but it's n- it's not going to be easy, is it? How do you think it works? It doesn't work. But once again, it's not proof of anything, Carl. Mm. Beyond the fact that you were a child in bed. Why did your dad ask what time she died? No, he it, it just sort of you know what do you say to someone when it's it's awkward, isn't it? When someone gives you bad news, so you just think, well, what can I ask? Oh, what time, oh, time did she die? What time, time does that happen? Me? Sorry. No, just, what, you just what, go. Oh, exactly. What, what time did she die? Uh, my no, wife. Right. My wife passed away. Yeah. What, what time is that? Like? <laughs> no, not exactly. He just said, oh, that's bad. When did that happen? Right. Mm. Right. And he said, well, thanks for asking. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. Quarter to eleven. I remember. What did he say? What did he say last night? I mean, that's weird. Convenient, aren't they? All these it stories. Is, or, or is it? Or, yeah, I mean, it's either that's exactly what happened, Rick, or he's he's misremembering the. the yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't. I don't know which one <laughs> to plump for. But I tell you this though. Go on. You know, if we're talking about ghosts and that. Yeah. Mm. Now, Ilda. Yeah. Uh, choose your bog standard old woman. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, I think that's on the gravestone. Yeah, I know. Yeah. No. Did, you, just, did you do the eulogy? No, you know. <laughs> that is great. <laughs> you, you what can we say about Ilda? <laughs> Bog standard old woman. Right, there's sandwiches at the bar. <laughs> That's the most insulting thing you can ever say. There's nothing. Let's <laughs> just think about Hilda that. Hilda lived her life. Thank you for coming to celebrate the life of Hilda. Who died at quarter to eleven specifically. And was a bog standard old woman. <laughs> Are we burning or burying? But anyway, but she lived to be quite old. Mm. Which annoyed you. And, but yeah, no, in a bog standard way. But this is what I was saying about us all living too long and stuff. Mm. It just... It just makes it worse when it does come to us being a ghost. I don't know what you're talking about that, again. That sentence made no sense. Just, if you are going to be haunted, right, say, I know you're going to say, well, I don't believe in them, so I'm not worried, so don't be going on about it. Mm. But say, like, you know, your new place that you've bought, you move in, and you go to bed, and... There's something moving about the room. Mm. You see it. Mm. It's a ghost. Oh no! Okay, look, let, let's for the sake more likely a Siamese cat called Ollie. No, because that's probably got its own room. But right? <laughs> <laughs> well, what I'm saying is, would you prefer to have an old person moving about looking at you, or just a young person? I'd prefer a youngish person who looks normal. And he's sort of floating about, and you go. Oh, right. That that looks normal, floating about. No, but but. An old woman would really scare me. Some ghosts are always going to have a bad reputation because they look scary because they're old. So that's you talk absolute shit. That's all I'm saying. So can we're you now believe going... we ever charged for this? No, but look, <laughs> if, if we are going into another life, right after this, which we're not, we move yet. on to another life. Yeah, we're not going to move on. That land, say if it is like another world. Where we go and we plough fields and we grow crop, it, crop, croppage. We grow crop, crops, uh, crops. If you want, yeah. Um, well, I would like to use the English language. <laughs> yeah, there's, there's too much fruit about, so just a crop, just something we need <laughs> to get back. <laughs> <fruit about. laughs> He's got an answer for everything. That's so we grow some crop. Yeah. yeah. So you grow your crop, and uh, now if we're all going into that other land or world or universe, mm. old, who's going to do the cropping? <laughs> <laughs> Oh 
god! Oh, you! Yeah. I've never heard so much crop in my life. <laughs> it's a load of old crop. I had to go for a, an ultrasound, right? Isn't that what you do if you're pregnant? Yeah, but they, they, do you know I've had kidney stones? Are you expecting? That we talked about it in the, in the other podcast, not that we've done, right? Uh, I've had a kidney stone. I don't want to go on about it. Uh, but it hurt. It's painful and that. Well, you are going on about it. No, yeah, and no, 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 but I'm just saying. It's routine. Don't worry about it's it. It's not routine. Well, uh, well, why do they have to keep going back? Then? Why do they have to keep going back? You're, you're yeah. questioning me. You're getting into a routine. Yourself. Keep going back. It's better than working. It. You don't have to promote yeah, sell the book. No, no. Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? Holiday or hospital? I don't know. I just say that we've got a book out, right? The world of Carl Pilkington. It's, it's, it's out now. When he goes on holiday, the first week, right? Uh, he, he's in and out of hospital. He's doing no good. He's got to go in again. He goes away with his family like twice a year. Goes away with Suzanne's family twice a year mm. he's now said he doesn't want to do any press for it because it's boring or he doesn't want why don't you why don't you plug in the book well, I mean if, you, if you're an author you've got to put, I've, get behind I've it. bought books without hearing someone telling me to buy stuff no you're, you just la- buy you're stuff. lazy you're no, lazy I'm, I'm not lazy it's just that I'm sick and tired of putting telly on or the radio and having people telling me oh you've got to buy this you've got to buy that no, I don't have to do anything I'll have a look myself when I'm in a bookshop let them just find it but there are hundreds and thousands of books, Carl. They may not find it. Well, You're trying to look. direct them towards it. I'm, I don't want to direct them to it. I just, you know, if you come across it. But most why of have you books... put all this work into this book? All these illustrations you've done in extra material. Because I enjoyed it for me. Right, but you don't want anyone to read it. Yeah, so why just put it, it in the door? They will read it. They'll they'll find it. People will find it. It's in the shop, isn't it? I'm always finding little books on different things and what have you. Yeah, you don't read them. You read the first couple of lines and you get it wrong. What, you know, it, it. So I went back, right, and I had the uh, the ultrasound thing. Where they they look in to see what else is in there, mm. uh, and uh, when I was in the waiting room, there was a woman there. I reckon she was about ninety-eight. <laughs> 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 now, awesome. why why are they rooting around in her to see what's up with her? Just let her let her die. Do you know what I mean? If she's not in any Jesus. pain, no, no. All I'm saying, I'm just saying, how long does she want to be around? And the, the the problem is, she went off. Right, I was sat in the waiting room. She went off into the little cubicle to put her, uh, a gown on and because she's old she can't bend her arms and that so she came out with it all open <laughs> on the back <laughs> and it was horrible it looked like like a, a chicken that hasn't been looked after right it was all leathery skin and that right now the thing <coughs> is it's all very well keeping people alive but the surroundings of the body isn't meant to be lasting that long is it mm. Do you know what I mean? The actual skin of, of a body, it's all very well keeping the art going, checking the kidneys and all that, but we're not meant to be around this length of time. Yet we are, we're messing with it. Yeah. Just do the gown up. You never do, you never get old, you don't go, look at the state of that. Because <laughs> they live about four weeks! Yeah, but maybe that's the way it's meant to be, in the same way, we maybe we were only meant to live to be 40. But why did you go in for your operation then? Why didn't you just think, well, this is it, about the time? If they're looking after an old woman who's about 98, I'm having a go. (laughs) (laughs) Well, of course. Because you want to live on. She She might have been flirting with you. No, she was... Keeping it open, just so you can have a little look. But I'm just saying, is that right? Is it right that That you're going in there rooting around and stuff? I didn't like it. I didn't like having it done. You know, I don't like going to the hospital and stuff and the doctors and all that. And she was pushing the uh, the thing down and she said oh you can have a look if you want so what, what down where on on my kidney she was pushing like this little scanner thing oh right she was going to have a look i was going i don't want to have a look she's going what's up with you i said i don't want to see me inside did they, have a tu- did they put a tube down the end of your knob yeah they did all that well, we've talked about that in the in the other but you were unconscious books. weren't you uh yeah but it doesn't matter does it if you know it's going on it still bothers you it's because you're asleep well not really no what do you mean well why does it bother you if you're asleep well, that's like saying, oh, I woke up and the house was robbed. Oh, it doesn't matter, you're asleep. Well, no, it's but... It's still going to bother you, isn't it? <laughs> no, but, no, but you knew it was happening and you, you did it willingly. What? It's not pleasant to go in and be made to go unconscious. That's the unpleasant bit, isn't it? And the uh, pain and Well, no, it's more it, the idea of it, isn't it? That's why, you know, doctors tell you everything they're doing. It's like, don't tell me, you know what you're doing, just do it. I'm well, not yeah, going to have so a go at it. You know, it's not like DIY people coming around and going, oh, well, what you should have done there is, and you can go, oh, I'll have a go at that next time on my own without calling you out. Forget kidney stones again, I'm not going to go, oh, I've had it done before, I know what to do, I'll stick it up there. Doesn't happen, does it? But I can't, what was I saying? <laughs> so anyway, so she she was pushing the, the scanner over yeah. me kidneys and stuff. Yeah. Now, it was weird with her, because at no point... 
did she make eye contact with me? Well, I don't understand what that means. Well, she's meant to wink and go, your kidneys are fucked. <laughs> no, yeah. but it's, ju it's just weird that she probably spends her days looking inside people more than she does talking to people. I just thought it was odd.